Starting off this countdown, we have Alexi Miller's house. Alexi Miller is the chairman of Russia's largest company and world's biggest natural gas producer. If you try and look up his house on Google Maps, well, Good luck. It is completely blurred out. In fact, we don't even have an image of it. And that's due to privacy reasons and safety concerns. I mean, this guy isn't everyone's biggest fan. Being that wealthy and big of a public figure, you don't know who's going to come for you. Now, I mentioned this before, but prisons are blurred out to prevent people or prisoners from breaking in or out of the facility. Google Earth literally shows you the entire layout of the place. So Miller probably has similar reasoning as to why he wants this place blurred. Someone could easily use Google Earth to figure out the best way to break into this dude's house. It would also show if he has cameras around his premise and where. So yeah, it's a little revealing. In our ninth spot today, we have the pentagram. The sigil of Baphomet is the official insignia of the Church of Satan. So of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic. Well here we have what appears to be this symbol located on the southern shore of the upper Tobol Reservoir. This symbol is massive. It's roughly 1200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually actually an abandoned Soviet era camp. And I believe that the lines that we see that appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our eighth spot, we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well, Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now, what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like I have so many questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point, aliens probably do live among us, so we're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our seventh spot, we have the disposed bodies. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the works of a serial killer. I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look like they aren't real body parts. Meanwhile, they are hidden in plain sight. Please don't get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. The guy in the trunk. Now, I have multiple questions for this. And I really don't know if I want to know the answers to them. First off, why is this guy naked? Second, why is he in the trunk of someone's car? Like, are we witnessing a kidnapping or is he escaping a kidnapping? Next, what's with the dog? It better just be taking a nap, okay? There's just so much going on in this picture. Let's just hope that he was intentionally naked and intentionally wanted to go lie down in his trunk for a bit, okay? Like, this can be used as inspiration for the fourth Hangover movie. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. This next one is not PJ-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is for mature audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the woman's hand is in that general direction. So you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you getting caught and upload it online. In our fourth spot, we have the creepy scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the silent people, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. This was done by the artist Riho Kila. No thank you, I'm sorry. I'd be too scared of them like coming alive at night or something. Also the name, the silent people, it's creepy. But hey, at least those will scare away the crows, you know, and anyone for a matter of fact. Moving on to number three, we have the mooning. In April of 2018, an English man named Toby Sullivan was out for a walk with his friend when he spotted the Google car. So he did what any normal person would do. He dropped his drawers and full on mooned the camera. Now, I don't know what was running through his mind when he did this, but I definitely did not need to see his peach. Also, for the longest time, his buttocks was uncensored and people could literally zoom into his crack. Okay, it's a little TMI. But when the photo and Toby's story went viral, Google decided to finally censor this guy's behind. Thank 
gosh. But even with the sensor, you can still fully see this guy's crack, so. Coming in at number two, we have mowing the lawn. Here's another young lad that recognized the Google car and thought, now is my time to shine. This guy was out mowing his lawn when he spotted the car and decided to lift up his shirt and flash the camera. Even though his face is pixelated, you can see he's given Google a funny face, a little ah. You know, I bet him and his family had a big laugh about that one. But seriously, that meant that every time someone looked up his place to get directions or whatnot, that image popped up. Hmm, boy, oh boy. And in our number one spot today, we have the mannequins. We got more creepy mannequins, folks. This time, we know for sure that they are mannequins and not just wrapped up dead bodies. So you may be wondering, hmm, that's an odd way to decorate your lawn. Where is this, a nuclear testing zone? No, no, this is a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California. Apparently a neighbor complained, probably a Karen, that this guy's fence was too high for the city's law. So the neighbors lowered their fence, but then in spite he decorated his yard so that his neighbors wake up every morning to this lovely view. I mean, there's no rules against having mannequins in your yard, so should have just let him have his high fence. That's what you get. Starting off this countdown, we have Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out on Google Maps, and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, Amchitka Island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, there are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half of the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there and that's why. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. In our ninth spot today, we have KFC. Now. This one is a little funny. So you know how Google Maps automatically censors out any person's face that they end up capturing? Well, they ended up censoring every single KFC. And that's because of Colonel Sanders' face. Google system detected it as a real person. Well, it is a real person and it got blurred. So the Colonel's face is censored on all KFC buildings and signs. In our eighth spot, we have the Army Logistics Command Headquarters. Located in Taiwan, the Army Logistics Command Headquarters building is one of various military sites across Taiwan that has been blurred out on Google. And I'm sure you all can understand why. They do so for security reasons. Google often blurs out military bases or buildings if they are considered important to a country's security. Like I said, this is just one of the many military buildings blurred out by the Taiwan government and by Google. But in 2019, an update was done by Google and it resulted in a number of these bases being revealed to the public accidentally. The blurring was accidentally removed and people could see the buildings from all sorts of angles. People saw the military bases layout, building structures, and the locations of missile launchers. Good job, Google. But don't worry, now it's fixed. In our seventh spot, we have Tontaco National Park, Chile. Now, why would a national park be censored on Google? Literally no one knows. So this is a privately owned nature reserve. Now on Google Maps, you could see it from afar, but as soon as you zoom in closer, it doesn't do anything. It just looks like a green blob. So why would they censor this area? Well, some say it's because of the fact that it's home to several endangered animal species. Whereas others believe that this place is home to animals that aren't supposed to exist. Imagine unicorns actually do exist and they're just in this area or like the Bigfoot wild. In our sixth spot, we have the single square. In El Hito, Spain, there is this random square that was censored among the roads and plantations. Now this site wasn't always censored. It became censored in 2007 when just a blur was added to the square. And many people were wondering why all of a sudden it was censored. Well, some say that's because a helicopter pad was placed there, so it was censored to hide that. Whereas others think that there's a missile silo placed there. As of 2013, the sensor I believe has been removed. And now all there is to see is an arid stretch of land. But what was going on there for seven years when it was censored? That's my question. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Orsprung Park. 
Located in the Netherlands, this is a mysterious building that, you guessed it, is censored. But what's weird is that this is the only property in a row of houses that is censored. Why is that house alone censored and not all of them? In older images from Google Earth, the building appears to be covered with a white box. Nowadays, if you search it, it's just a pixelated green and brown area. Again, no one knows why this area is blurred. When you check Google Street View, you can see that it's a brick building, but on Google Earth, you see nothing. Now, it could just be that the homeowner wants privacy. Who knows? In our fourth spot, we have North Korea. And of course, North Korea is on this list. I mean, hello, the whole country itself is one big secret. It's no shocker that sections of the country are blurred out. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. So people have thought that they are hiding something there. Theory one is that that's where they do weapon tests or that's where they have missiles or other weapons stored. Theory two is that that's where they are conducting a secret military project. Very vague, we don't know what the project is. Again, it's North Korea, so we really don't know what they're up to or why that particular area is blurred out. In our third spot, we have Marcoule nuclear site. Located in France, this site was first constructed in 1952. Now, we've done a number of these Google Earth videos, so at this point, you should realize that most nuclear facilities are blurred out. Mostly because these nuclear sites were caught doing illegal things with their nuclear waste, like dumping it into the ocean. Now, this one hasn't done that, but in 2011, it was the center of an explosion. One person was killed, four were injured, one was severely injured. So, I mean, I think you can guess as to why an atomic energy site using uranium and plutonium oxides is censored by the French government, especially after that explosion in 2011. In our second spot today, we have Sandy Island aka the island that exists, but it doesn't exist. Now, this one comes with a little backstory. This island was discovered by Captain Cook, yes, Captain Cook, not Hook, during his explorations around Australia in the late 1700s. But now, it seemingly disappeared. Back in the 19th century, Sandy Island was noted on a number of maps and nautical charts. It was said to be located in the South Pacific. It was located between Australia and New Caledonia. But it's no longer there. On Google Maps, if you enter the island's coordinates, all you see is a faint outline of what looks like a long, thin island. But there's no landmass in sight. And in our number one spot today, we have Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Turns out that Greenpeace found that these tests were polluting the waters as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed that they have been affected by the radiation from these tests. Nowadays, the island is off limits to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half of the island is blurred out on Google Maps. Or it's because they are still doing these new nuclear tests. We may never know. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the star. While searching through images, someone stumbled upon an isolated corner of Kazakhstan, and here they found a large pentagram etched into the ground, which of course may have set off some alarm bells. The five-point star is surrounded by a circle and is very clearly visible, and of course, once the image began circling the internet, people were coming up with only the most wild theories and explanation. In the end, it turned out to be the exact opposite of something sinister. It's actually the outline of a park that was made into the shape of a star. The star is so clearly marked because of the roadways, and where there's no road, there's a lot of trees, which makes the symbol stand out even more. It's like the best possible outcome for this one, honestly. A beautiful tree-lined park in the shape of a star. How lovely. In our ninth spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. 2207 Seymour Avenue, located located in Cleveland, Ohio, is a home where a horrific crime took place. From 2002 to 2004, Ariel Castro kidnapped three young women. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. The police came to his house and rescued the other women. Castro was arrested within hours. He was sentenced to life plus 1,000 years in prison without parole. Due to the disturbing crimes that took place at his home, Google Maps decided to blur his house. In fact, the house has been named the House of Horrors. But a couple years back, his house was demolished to 
help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. Coming in at number eight, we have the French nuclear facility. The Arriva La Hague nuclear fuel reprocessing facility in France is another place that is blurred out on Google Maps. This facility opened in 1976 and is responsible for treating nuclear fuel from several countries. Here's the thing though, this facility hasn't always been blurred out. By using the Google Earth history tab, you can see old Google Earth images of this facility. So now, why all of a sudden is it blurred out? What is going on there? Well, it may have something to do with the controversy it has received and the backlash it received from Greenpeace. Since 1997, Greenpeace has been trying to shut it down, saying that they dump 1 million liters of liquid radioactive waste per day in the ocean. That is severely messed up if that's true. Maybe that's why it's blurred out, so that people don't see what they're really up to with their nuclear waste. Moving on to number seven, we have the French prison. There are a number of prisons that are blurred out on Google Earth, including the Beaumet prison in Marseille. Now, why do they blur out images of prisons? Well, a couple of reasons. One, for privacy. But the main reason is so that the criminals don't know the layout of the prison. Basically, this prison wasn't always blurred. Following a successful jailbreak, France's Minister of Justice was like, why are there aerial images of this prison available online? And then that led to the prison getting blurred. But of course, you can still find older images of the prison on Google Maps that show what it looks like and its layout. In our sixth spot, we have the Antarctic Ice Shield. This is another pretty strange place to get blurred. But basically, halfway between Australia and Madagascar, there is a 22 kilometer long blur in the middle of the Antarctic ice shield. I mean, this place is one of the most isolated places on Earth. There's nothing but ice and penguins there. So why is it being blurred out? We don't know for sure, but people think that there is something hidden there that we're not allowed to see. Although it's thought to be owned by Australia, theory goes that Russia or the US have built a research facility there. The only way we'll know for sure is by visiting the place itself. So who's coming with me for this field trip? It'll be a lot of fun. Come on, just pack a snowsuit and lots of hot packs. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests apparently took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Why? Well, Greenpeace found out that these tests were polluting the water as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed they have been affected by the radiation from the tests. Nowadays, the island is off limit to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half of the island is blurred on Google Maps. Or maybe it's because they're still doing these nuclear tests. We may never know. Moving on to number four, we have Elmira Correctional Facility. Elmira Correctional Facility, also known as The Hills, is a maximum security state prison in New York. This is another facility blurred on Google Earth. Why? Well, a number of reasons. One, they have fears of an aerial attack. Number two, they have fears that someone will use this information to plan an escape. And number three, the prison is highly secure. Why would they want images of the building online for everyone to see? But it turns out that this location got blurred after a number of riots and mass escapes. Moving on to number three, we have North Korea. Okay, is it even shocking that North Korea has sections of its country blurred? I mean, they are so secretive, so this isn't a surprise at all. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. So people have thought that they are hiding something there, maybe a secret military project. Who knows? I mean, hey, the country is hiding so many things. Like I said, this one doesn't really come as a surprise. In our second spot, we have Pateo de los Naranjos. Located in Spain, this place translates to Orange Tree Yard, and it is completely censored on Google Maps. No matter how close you try to zoom in on the map or the area close by, you won't be able to see anything. Why? Well, there's a lot of government buildings located there. So it's blurred out for security and privacy reasons, which makes sense. Many government or military buildings are blurred out on Google Maps for similar reasons. And in our number one spot today, we have Jeanette Island. Located in Russia, this island is said to contain a secret Russian military base. If you type this island into Google, you'll find a whole lot of nothing. Legit, it just looks like a bunch of water. It's not even registered on Google Maps as an island. 
when you type in its coordinates, you will see a message that says this island is unavailable. Now, before it was removed from the maps altogether, it wasn't even blurred out. It was actually blacked out. Like there was a full on black mash just covering it. But when you zoomed in, you could see this icy mass. And that's all. According to Reddit user Exoplanetary Science, he said, and I quote, Google rarely blacks out without reason. A search through Google Earth shows that this has been permanently blurred out, even in images dating back to the 1980s. I'm going to guess there's a concealed Russian military base located there, and possibly quite a substantial one. So there you have it folks, secret Russian military base. Starting off the number 10 is the underwater base. Now Argentine researcher Marcelo Igazusta found what he believes to be an underwater alien base. The object is 8.5 miles long and it seems to be a pyramid of some kind. It's located right off the coast of Mexico near the ancient Aztec and Mayan pyramids which could be coincidental or totally random. Since this pyramid has an 8.5 mile base, that catapults it into being the biggest pyramid pyramid in the world. Forget Egypt, humans could have never built something like that, especially underwater, so Marcelo believes only aliens could have accomplished it. I mean, cut us some more slack, we're better than that. He believes either the base was there from before or an alien craft landed in the water and was built to do so and they just never left. In our number 9 spot today we have the bunker. If you were to take a nice little scroll through the deserts of New Mexico, at some point you'd see something etched into the ground. They appear to be two large diamonds that are surrounded by a pair of overlapping circles. Okay. Likely not a naturally occurring situation, so what could it be? Maybe an ancient geoglyph. Maybe some sort of cool secret Area 51 style place. No, of course it's just allegedly the site of some hidden bunker that belongs to the Church of Scientology. Apparently this cult uses these symbols to guide Scientologists who are returning to Earth after fleeing a planet's Armageddon. Okay. Sure. There are other examples of strange and hidden places that somehow link back to this cult, so it really has me wondering just how many properties and areas that they have and what they're up to. Maybe that explanation really is the truth behind these symbols, but what if it's not? Despite how controversial this cult is, they've managed to grow quite widespread and they've gained some quite well-known people over the years, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. <laughs> So random. In our number eight spot today, we have the cauldron. Google Earth can basically take you anywhere except for the areas they, of course, have blocked off for a variety of reasons. And when I say basically anywhere, sometimes I mean even the most absurd places, including right to the edge of a boiling cauldron of lava. That's right, you can head right to the edge of the volcano that is located on an island in the Vanuatu chain in the South Pacific. It is cool because it's likely the closest I'll ever get to seeing this kind of view in real life. But it's also terrifying to look into that cavern that's filled with bright, hot magma. Like, even just looking at this photo, you can almost feel the heat and the panic of being at the mouth of a volcano. Very cool, but also very scary. In our number seven spot today, we have the Nevada Triangle. This image from Google Maps captures a spooky symbol that is lurking in the deserts of Nevada. I think conspiracy theorists have forever ruined triangles just in general, but this large one with all the circles inside, coupled with the minimal answers on on what it is definitely makes for a bit of an eerie sight. Right now, the most popular theory as to what this could be is a bombing target. Apparently, close by is an Air Force base, so that theory truly would make quite a bit of sense. It could also be some sort of abandoned airstrip, perhaps, but of course, with any mystery on the internet, there are more very wild theories out there. Of course, there's the obligatory it's aliens theory, along with some sort of Illuminati idea, but it wouldn't be the internet without it. In our number six spot today, we have the fire. As the satellites and little cars go by that document the imagery used on Google Maps, they can't exactly predict or control who or what is going to be happening in the area captured. Sometimes it might capture someone who will eventually be blurred out on their front lawn. Sometimes it captures accidents. And in this case, it captured an absolutely raging field fire in Arkansas. It would already be terrifying from the ground, but seeing it from this vantage point really shows how large and 
and powerful it is. Someone on Reddit made a good point, saying that it appears as though there are people on the south side, which likely means that the fire is contained and controlled, thankfully, but that doesn't really make it any less cool or interesting to see. In our number five spot today, we have the Valley of Dolls. Google Maps, especially the street view, is such a great way to look around a place and kind of get your bearings before you even get there. I mean, I remember almost eight years ago now, before I moved to Toronto, I spent hours digitally walking around the streets, seeing my home, where I was gonna go to school, all that jazz. It was super exciting. But sometimes you walk around a city so unlike your own that it absolutely shocks you, and that is likely what would happen if you were to just stumble upon the town or village of Nagoro in Japan, which is known as the Valley of Dolls. A woman named Ayano Tsukimi grew up in the village and remembers a time when it was full of families and other children just like her, but during her years in secondary school, she and her family moved to Osaka. Ayano continued to grow up, she married and had her own kids, all the while her parents ended up moving back to the town. After her mother passed away, she also moved back to the village in order to help care for her father, and this is when she realized that the population of the town had dropped drastically since her time here as a child. While living here and trying to keep her garden free of crows, she made a scarecrow that resembled her father, and she placed it outside. When she realized that those living in the village began to mistake the scarecrow for her father, she had an idea to commemorate those in the village who had passed away with a scarecrow and boom, 350 dolls later, the town became an attraction for travelers and journalists. It's a bit eerie to peer through on Google Maps, but when the full story is revealed, it gets way less sinister and actually kind of sweet. In our number four spot today, we have the Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was a huge ship with 17 decks, six restaurants, and a three-story theater. The ship was big enough to hold a whopping 4,200 passengers, so there were a lot of people on this boat on January 13th. 2012. On that day, the boat's captain wanted to sail a little closer to the island of Isla del Giglio than he normally would so that he could impress and salute the residents. He turned off the ship's alarm for the computer navigation system, which turned out to be just as terrible of an idea as you would think it is. He thought he knew the waters well enough to navigate by sight, but when the ship struck an underwater rock, things took a deadly turn. The ship capsized and sank, which unfortunately ended up taking the lives of some of the passengers on board. The captain, who was responsible for the accident in the first place, made one more awful mistake when he abandoned ship while passengers were still stuck on board. The recovery for the ship was the largest of its kind as the huge ship had been entirely dismantled. You might be wondering why on earth I just told you an entire shipwreck story, and that is because both the wreck as well as the subsequent rescue efforts were visible on Google Earth for quite some time. The satellite imagery probably isn't even as near as terrifying as it must have been to be close during those terrifying days, but it does give us an idea of the size of this disaster. In our number three spot today, we have the crater. Space is very cool, but for every cool and interesting thing I learn about it, I also learn one equally or even more terrifying thing about it as well. It's a very scary place and we truly have no control over the powers of it, which is exactly why this startling image found on Google Earth is an unsettling one. Somewhere in northern Arizona, there is a mark that is like an Earth scar and it serves as a reminder of a 50,000 year old meteor strike. When I call it a mark or a scar, I am greatly understating it as this thing is a huge huge crater known as the Behringer Crater. It's the result of a 150 foot slab of nickel iron that smashed into the earth with the exploding force of two and a half million tons of TNT. Yeah, this sure makes me glad I wasn't around 50,000 years ago. This natural disaster caused this natural landmark that serves as our reminder of just how small we really are. In our number two spot today, we have the scene. This is an image that went viral with people saying that if you typed in these certain coordinates that you will see what people think is a man dragging a body down a dock and leaving a bloody trail behind. That would be gruesome, wouldn't it? When looking at the image, it does seem compelling and that is pretty much what it looks like, although it's definitely still a little unclear. In fact, it was so compelling that Snopes actually did an article on it. The dock is located in the Netherlands, and according to their research into it, Snopes claims that the photo is just a few people walking, and they are likely accompanied by a sort of brown dog, who may have just jumped into the water and then left some watermarks, thus the reasoning for the red stained wood. That is definitely a less sinister explanation, and it's the one I'm hoping is true. In our number one spot today, we have the pond. Davy Lee Niles 
Charles was 72 years old in 2006 when he disappeared. Sadly, for almost a decade, the case went cold as no one could find him or his car or even figure out what might have happened to him. That was until someone was decorating a Christmas tree in 2015 and was high up on a lift and they spotted something deep within a pond nearby. That something they spotted turned out to be something that had also been visible on Google Maps for years and in the end, it was the car that belonged to Davey. And when the authorities went to recover it, they were able to find his body inside. The car wasn't visible before because at ground level, it's just too mercury. While the satellite image taken from Google Maps makes it quite clear that there is something there, not too many people are taking a virtual tour around this body of water. Thankfully, that person in 2015 wasn't only aware of their surroundings, but they said something when they saw something, and it was able to lead to closure for the family of Davey. Have you ever been so bored that you go on Google Earth or Maps and just fool around and see what your house looks like from above? Because I have. Well, over the years, a number of Google Earth users have noticed some pretty fishy things caught on Google Earth. From murders caught on camera to secret government places. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have Snow Saddle. Snow Saddle is a major mountain peak of the Himalayas in Nepal. But if you try to view it from Google Earth, you'll see that the whole area is blacked out. Which is obviously suspicious. Why is a mountain peak blurred? What's going on there that has Google blurring it? To this day, no one knows for sure. But of course, there are a number of theories. One theory is that the Nazis had secret expeditions to the Himalayas and found a UFO base in that area. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area, so maybe it is a top secret UFO base. Who knows? We don't know. Coming in at number nine is the Arctic landing. So okay, bit of fake advertisement. This one isn't located in the Arctic. It's actually located in Antarctica. Not the same thing, you guys. Either way, Russian UFO enthusiast Valentin Degretev claims he found an alien crash site in Antarctica. There seems to be a saucer-shaped dent in the snow, like the flying saucer landed on its side and just went straight through the snow. I hope you got what I meant when I did that. <laughs> I mean, I need to speculate and offer other explanations like, okay, is the ice breaking apart underneath there and that's what's causing the slit? But I feel like that's far-fetched, but then again, so is a flying saucer. But it is peculiar and it's surrounded by ridges and flat snow, so it's just a big, unexplainable anomaly. I don't know, guys. Is it just a random slit? Is it an alien saucer? I don't really know. At number eight, we have the Martian twins. Now, during the Kofun era in Japan, which was during 300 to 538 AD, they used to build Kofun tombs. And these tombs were for people of the ruling class, and they were shaped like keyholes, most commonly, and surrounded by water. That's all well and good, but alien hunters spotted a mound on Mars that looked identical to one specific Kofun era tomb. Now, they fully believe that the suspicious similarities between both features is evidence that Martians settled on Earth centuries ago after a catastrophic unknown event forced them to leave the red planet. They ended up building a similar structure on Earth and then going back to Mars when it was finally appropriate. But again, I feel like this whole theory is speculation. How do we know what this catastrophic unknown event was and if it even happened? If aliens have the technology to travel to another planet and set up camp there, surely they could have evaded whichever terrible thing happened on Mars? Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. I don't think my expectations are that high, you guys. Plausible. Filling on number seven slot is the alien base. Now, back in April of this year, a few UFO hunters were searching Google Earth for some sus looking and boy did they find it. There's this really weird 500 meter long object off the coast of Antarctica that from the top looks like an iceberg but literally isn't. The left of it is oddly straight and the top has vertical ridges on it making it not look like an iceberg at all. According to UFO sightings hotspot, it doesn't fit the description of an iceberg and I quote, I'm not an iceberg expert but this object is really peculiar and looks like a vessel disguised as an iceberg. I have to fully agree with you honestly, I feel like the Aliens were probably like, hey, just cover the top in an ice sheet. These dumb humans won't notice the difference. But we did. We are on to you. Dumb humans. May have taken us a few years, but we got there. Now at number six is bad parking. I just found this one hilarious because alien life is meant to be so advanced and ahead of us. And I look at this image and I'm like, were you drunk driving? Like this is shockingly bad. Now the image was located by YouTube channel Secure Team 10 who found it crash landed in a restricted part of Arizona with a white blacked out car parked next to it. CIA perhaps? 
Probably. Now the flying saucer looks really old fashioned if anything, like it's not slick or thin and I'm pretty sure it landed upside down which is what's really funny to me. Like how do you mess up a landing that badly? Maybe the aliens decide to take one of the old ones for a ride and then didn't realise how outdated it was and then boom, disaster, flipped it over. You're gonna be grounded when you get back to your planet. Coming in at number five is the slit. In the very remote British territory of South Georgia, a really strange thing was found in the snow. And no, we're not talking about my ex, but wow, he keeps popping up in these videos. Now, alien hunting YouTube channel Secure Team 10 found a slit in the snow that they claim has all the signs that point to a UFO crash landing. It has the exact trajectory of an angular flying object that came to a screeching halt in the snow. Now, the imprint isn't a plane. Otherwise, we would have known. It's not military craft, or we would have known. And the crash is too narrow and small to be anything other than an alien craft. But I mean, I don't really know. I think calling every weird slit in the snow an alien crash landing is a bit of a cop out. But alien hunters clearly know better than I do. So I'm gonna just leave it to the experts. At number four is the flying saucer. Clearly, you can tell I'm running out of title ideas. And I mean, there's only so many different ways you can say spaceship, okay? Either way, YouTube channel Secure Team found an image on Google Earth that they believe is a flying saucer. Located in the South Pole, the circular object in question is sticking out of a mountain amongst the snow. But the rocky areas around it are quite rigid and randomly cut, whereas this object is oddly round. And like, perfectly round at that. And I can't zoom in enough to tell if it's just a round cut of water that's randomly there or if it's actually alien aircraft. But since I've never seen alien aircraft, I don't even know even if I could zoom in, would I know? Who knows? Now there's like a thinner outline inside the actual outline of the round bit, which seems unnatural to me, like there's no way that bit's natural. Has to be man-made or or alien made. But I feel like zooming in more is necessary to get an actual conclusion, and alas, I can't do that. And I'm definitely not gonna go to Antarctica just to find out. But you can, and let me know if you do. Filling our number three slot is the floating island. Now located in Argentina, back in 2016, UFO sightings daily fully believed this floating island was the entrance to an alien base. On Google Maps, it looks like a random crescent was cut out of the greenery in the area. Like there's no other shape like that found nearby or on the continent or in the country for that matter. The island actually moves and rotates in a circle. And considering Argentina has had many UFO sightings over the years, it could could be possible that aliens have their base underneath this island. Never say never. Now the slit could easily fit a 100 meter UFO through it and no one has actually gone and explored the water beneath the floating island. I think it's just really weird how there's like an oddly perfect circular island that magically got cut out by mother nature and oh it also rotates and moves. Like nah honey that's not mother nature that is alien nature. Now at number two are the skid marks. Now, in June of this year UFO theorist Scott Waring found what he believed to be an alien crash site in Antarctica because apparently that's the go-to landing pad for most aliens on this list. It's located towards the north of the island off the coast of another little island. If you know what that means because I don't since I'm not an Antarctica expert. Now on the image he claims part of the UFO's wing is folded up and its concave area is severely dented. There are evident burnt skid marks trailing behind the craft and the craft itself looks to be made of some metallic material. The craft is apparently 96 meters long while the trail it left behind it is nearly 450 meters long so clearly it was a really rough landing. And finally at number one is the debated. So even though this one has been debunked I put it as number one because it was so widely believed to be an alien crash landing site for so long before, you know, it obviously wasn't. Now the satellite image shows a mountainous island off the coast of Antarctica. Now in the smooth snow, there's a block of something that's crashed into the snow, leaving a long deep trail behind it. I mean, and I get the allegation, it's narrow, and how often do things really crash into Antarctica and let's see a UFO from this list, clearly, so I get why the thought was there. And the trail is quite long, but if you follow the trail back, you'll see the trail goes back to a mountain peak and a bunch of disturbed snow. And how many times did I just say trail in the last 30 seconds? Now people believe an avalanche occurred and debris was what the object was, or perhaps it was a trapped submarine, I don't really know. Either way, debunked, finally. Starting off this countdown, we have when duty calls. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, popping a squat behind a bush and letting one go. And you you really don't want a Google car to pass by and catch you in the act and then publish it online for everyone to see. Because that's actually what happened to this guy. 
Poor dude was trying so hard to be discreet and he just couldn't win. What's worse is that his company's vehicle wasn't blurred. So now if his work sees this, it's probably very easy to identify him. Moving on to number nine, we have Baker Lake. Located in Nunavut, Canada, Google Earth is letting you see none of it. Get it? Like none of it? <laughs> Sorry, I love my buns. So if you look it up on Google Maps, it's weird because you see just a black strip covering a large area near the lake. What's it blocking? Again, we don't know for sure, but we have some crazy conspiracies. One theory is that the strip is concealing extraterrestrial beacons that help the navigation of the crafts, or that it's a craft landing strip. I don't know. They also say that this area would be perfect for the beacons since snow creates a powerful electromagnetic field that helps send a better signal. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot, we have the Pacific Northwest Blur. Here is a view of the area close to the Washington, Oregon border. And would you look at that? There's a random patch blacked out. To this day, no one knows what that is. But something is there that Google doesn't want us to see. In fact, some people believe that it is a HARP site or H-A-A-R-P. HARP is said to be a military program that weaponizes weather and causes natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, droughts, you get it. Now, some people have actually traveled to that area to see what's up, but unfortunately haven't been able to find anything. Kind of suspicious, like what does Google know that we don't know? A whole lot, that's what. In our seventh spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. This is the address to a home located in Cleveland, Ohio. A home in which a horrific crime took place. A crime that people don't like to talk about. From 2002 to 2004, Adriel Castro kidnapped three young women, Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. Police came to his house and rescued the other women. This house has since been blurred on Google Maps due to the horrific crimes that took place inside. In fact, it was given the name, the House of Horrors. But in 2013, it was actually demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. In our sixth spot, we have Valencia City. Located in the Philippines, Valencia City is one of the largest and most populated cities in the province of Budkanan. It's home to over 190,000 people. It's even a popular tourist spot. But if you want to find it on Google Earth, you can't. The whole city is just blurred out. This was apparently done under government orders. Valencia City is home to their government's headquarters. It's said to house a top secret missile defense program. Others say that they do missile testing there, but that hasn't been proven, so we really don't know. It's just weird that the whole city is blurred out, not just a single area. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, this island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there. We just don't know what. Moving on at number four, we have Vokel Air Base. Located in the Netherlands, we have the Vokel Air Base, which is a military air base used by the Royal Netherlands Air Force. According to former Dutch Prime Minister, there are 22 US nuclear bombs being stored in bunkers of this airspace, which is one of the many reasons as to why it appears pixelated on Google Earth. You got thermonuclear bombs, all the way to bombs that are said to be four times powerful as the ones used on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, for the longest time, the place was just rumored to have nukes. It wasn't known for sure. That was until 2013 when the prime minister let it slip. He said, and I quote, I would never have thought those silly things would still be there in 2013. I think they are an absolutely pointless part of a tradition in military thinking. In our third spot, we have the mysterious Russian site. Located in the Siberian tundra, close to the city of Egvikinot. I know I said that wrong. I literally looked up the pronunciation, but there is nothing out there, so I apologize. 
Egvigno, I'm so sorry. Anyways, the area is blurred out on Google Earth and no one knows why. I've been saying that a lot this video, but it's true. No one knows why. But it didn't always appear like this. At one point, they had edited the satellite imagery. They cut out a section around Egvinat, that place I don't know how to say, and pasted it over whatever they wanted to blur. They thought it would make it less obvious. But apparently on Russian maps, they have the area blurred with a black box. So what's going on in that area? Some say it's Harp again. Others say there's a large gold deposit in that area, so they don't want people finding that out. Others say it's a ballistic missile testing site. Coming in at number two, we have the murder scene. Google Earth is a snitch, y'all, okay? A couple of years ago, they caught a murder on camera. It shows a dark figure standing by a body laying down on the ground by some abandoned train tracks. That's all we know. Obviously, due to it being disturbing in nature, they don't want people seeing it. And in our number one spot today, we have the poor donkey. Now, this has to be one of the funniest, yet saddest things caught on Google Earth slash maps. So you know how they have that van with the camera that drives along and it just snaps photos like every second in every direction? Well, while going along, it captured a donkey at the side of the road. Seconds later, if you click down the road and you turn back, the donkey's still there, just now laying on the floor. It had been hit by the Google Earth truck. It's pretty sad, rest in peace, donkey. But that doesn't look too good on the company if they're going around and hitting and killing animals. 